the speech that was made in the House of Commons yesterday, uh, not by an education minister, but by the Equalities Minister, uh, Kemi Badenoch, in which she said uh, the teaching of uh, white privilege uh, as a fact is illegal in school. She also didn't want Black Lives Matter uh, being woven into uh, any approach uh, to the curriculum. And uh, Halfen uh, essentially uh, agreed. I'm delighted to be joined by uh, Calvin Robinson, well known to many of you who uh, uh, listen to talk radio regularly. He's he's someone we often go to because he's a school governor and an education uh, consultant and former assistant uh, principal. Calvin, Kemi got it right or wrong? Good morning, Alistair. Kemi got it absolutely right. I'm over the moon. She could not have been clearer about this statement, you know, that teaching critical race theory and bringing Black Lives Matter into the classroom is illegal, and teachers and schools should not be doing it. What is the danger? Why is it not appropriate? Well, we're teaching young white kids that, that they are oppressive, and we're teaching young black kids that they are victims, and that's not a good mentality to set people up with uh, as they approach education and as they leave school in, into the wider world. We want to encourage all young people that this is a free country, we have equality of opportunity for the most part in that if you work hard, you can become a success. And that's what we need to tell them. We need to encourage them with positive mindset and to think for themselves and not to be indoctrinated into a into a hard left ideology. It's interesting, isn't it? In in, in all matters of history, and I, I personally loved history O-level and I did it uh, at A-level as well, although I, I did economics at university. But I went to a Roman Catholic school and one of the areas that we studied was the reformation of the English church. And the real challenge was for the monks who taught me to give an objective view. Isn't it right that children are taught about racial challenges within the United Kingdom in the 21st century, but in a balanced and impartial way? Absolutely. So there are several different approaches to this. As a teacher, you can say, look, you can be open. You can be like, my views are this, but many other people believe that. Or you can say there are two different stances. Here's one, here's the other, if you don't want to implicate yourself. But what you can't do is say, this is the way, this is fact. And that's what's happening at the moment. We're having people say, schools and teachers are saying that white privilege is a fact. It is a thing that is happening in this country and that white people are privileged based on the color of their skin. And if you're non-white, you are oppressed based on the color of your skin. And we know that's not the case. There are many, many issues at play in our society, and most of them come down to class, if I'm honest, yeah. but race is a very insignificant factor in our lives. And to kind of encourage that is encouraging division, and it's stoking up racial tensions where they don't exist. So I, I question why people are pushing this agenda in the first place. Sure. I asked um, Robert Halfen, uh, and you know him very well because he's the chairman of the Education Select Committee, therefore uh, he's, he's a big player uh, in your world. Uh, and I, he said, like you, he thought that Kemi Badenoch was absolutely spot on. Uh, and when I last spoke to him, he said, the, you know, the real problem in schools in the United Kingdom these days is white working class kids. Uh, I, I said boy, he corrected me and said, no, it's boys and girls, although the girls doing slightly better. But it is white working class children who are doing least well in schools, partly because of economic class reasons and the rest of it. But folk have become frightened about saying that. Yeah, it's become taboo, hasn't it? You can't use the word white without being seen as racist these days. And that's the problem. That's probably why they've fallen behind. You know, If we look at education statistics from the DfE, from the ONS, we actually see that black African kids are excelling all the way through primary, all the way through secondary. They're twice as likely to go to university than white British kids. White British kids, in particular the working class white British kids, are falling behind. They're being neglected because it's not seen as politically correct to address their needs. It, That's I, not OK. I, I, time is against us, but I'm going to interrupt on that point. They're being neglected by mums and dads, by teachers, by guardians. Who's neglecting them? Who's not stimulating them to get in there and give it a real whack? I would say schools. I would say that schools need to raise standards and raise expectations for all children, no matter what race or religion, and stop trying to pigeonhole kids into different boxes and say, OK, they're from a ethnic diverse background they need special attention or they're not so they don't just raise our expectations for all of them and they will thrive in that environment that's what we will see is it i mean this is precarious territory but hey deep breath and go into it is the real problem here that we've spent so much time trying to redress the balance because 
there is no doubt that the children of some immigrants were given a bad cut of the uh, at the cake in school and, and and we needed to try and rectify that but as it were that's sorted now and it's gone over the top yeah the, like what douglas murray calls an overcorrection we've absolutely seen that you know history is the topic we're talking about a lot at the moment and that's because people want to decolonize it or or change it to add more black history to the curriculum and what i would say is look we teach history that is the events that shaped our nation or shaped Europe or shaped the world. We don't teach these subjects history or any of them based on the color of people's skin. And we don't tailor our lessons to the identities of the people in our classes. We teach the knowledge that they need to know and we help give them the skills that they need to survive in life. And that's how schools should be. Where they've gone off track and where schools have started to overcorrect and try to address racial inequalities that they see in society, they've gone uh, above their remit and they're actually breaking the law and that's what Kemi was saying you yeah. know, we need to be have equality in the classroom and we have to have balance in all discussions final point for you and I can see the lovely Mike Graham hovering at the door so I'll get it in quickly before he then comes in and grabs you from from me um, we've heard Kemi Badenoch say it uh, as the equalities minister in the House of Commons last night we've heard Robert Halfen echo it on this programme as chair of the education select committee how important is it that either Nick Gibb the schools minister or Gavin Williams and the education secretary shares with us their thoughts on this matter it's vital but we should be clear that the dfe have spoken about this uh, a couple of weeks ago they mentioned equality in education when they were talking about relationship health and sex education they didn't specifically link it to crt or black lives matter or any of that but it's all the same act the education act 1996 states that schools must be politically neutral in everything that they teach and that accounts for all subjects and all subject matter Calvin Robinson, good to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed and uh, hope to be able to talk to you again ere long. Uh, Calvin Robinson there, school governor, education consultant, former assistant principal uh, on the speech that Kemi Badnock made last night about Black Lives Matter. Yeah, it was good, wasn't it? I, I thought it was an absolute cracker. Yeah. Uh, and, and we picked it up and ran with it and woven it Absolutely. into the programme. Well, something that should have been said quite a long time ago, really, but, so, but people were frightened to say it for whatever reason. I don't really understand why, because it yeah. per makes perfect sense. That, and I think what's really intriguing from what Calvin was just saying, and Robert Halfen said it earlier on, mm. It is that both of the absolutist positions are bonkers. Yeah, yeah. But what you've got to do is you've got to have an honest education. You know, the kids have got to have a chance to yeah. learn about both sides right. of the... And then they'll make their own minds I heard a up. terrible story from uh, one of my friends uh, who's got their kids at a particular school that I'm not going to mention, where apparently during a kind of period of downtime, they decided to have a discussion about politics. Um, and they were drawing a graph which showed basically the history of the Labour Party. Um, and on the one side, it was all of the various, you know, different prime ministers. And on the other side was the Nazi party, um, for some reason. Um, and over there uh, was where they put Donald Trump. And this is what's being taught in schools. Or from mums and dads. Uh, well, who knows? But who knows? Uh, slightly disturbing. I it's very thought. disturbing. 